Spoiler warning, this video contains spoilers for the video game Detroit Become Human. If you intend to play the game and experience to its full, don't watch this video yet, come back later. Sometimes you play a game and that game sticks with you. The message is strong, the graphics are beautiful, the characters are well developed and the general story gives you goosebumps. Recently I've had this experience with the video game Detroit Become Human. In case you don't know the game, here's a little bit of context for you. Developed by Quantic Dream, this game takes you on a storytelling experience where your choices influence everything that happens around you and the three main characters. The setting is a dystopian future of 2038 Detroit. Androids are everywhere and we can't live without them. The economy runs on androids. Space exploration is done by androids. There are even wars being fought by androids. Basically, androids are everywhere. Now androids are becoming what seems to be deviant. And this is the plotline where you jump in. You follow three androids, the main characters called Kara, Marcus and Connor. In this setting, the game gives you a lot of moral choices and throws a lot of storytelling at you. Uh, this is what makes the game very interesting and there are three topics that I want to talk about and dive into today. One, what is being human? One of the tropes in the game is that androids want to be treated as humans and have the same equal rights as humans and be on the same foot of humans. This prompts the question, when is something considered human? When do we actually consider something human? There are some of you out there who probably consider something human if it's homo sapiens. In a strict scientific way of speaking, you are completely correct. You are right. But is our scientific classification the only way that we can describe being human? Or is there more to the story here? Maybe being human is also taking part in the human experience. And one of the things that really comes up in the human experience is the things that we feel and the things that make us feel uniquely human. They are, for example, the love that you feel for your mother, this disgust that you can feel once you look into the mirror and you don't really like what you see, the feeling of joy that you get once you see tiny ducklings that you want to squeeze because they are so cute, or the feeling of horror if you watch somebody being decapitated. These feelings are something complex, something some people would say are uniquely human. What if there are creatures who develop the ability to emulate these human emotions? They would start to feel happiness and sadness, but also disgust, pride, maybe a sense of self-preservation. If they would be able to feel this, wouldn't that make them human? Nothing to do with any of this. When that man killed that Tracy, I knew I was next. I was so scared. I begged him to stop, but he wouldn't. So I put my hands around his throat and I squeezed until he stopped moving. Yes, I killed him. But I was just defending myself. I wanted to live. I wanted to get back to the one I love. Forget about the humans, the smell of their sweat and their dirty words. But you, you've taken her away from me. I love her. 
You let Kara and Alice die. How could you do that? You could have saved them. Remember, the lives of these androids are in your hands. Listen, I, I want you to go with Rose. She'll give you the life I never could. Here's your passport. You're the best thing that ever happened to me, Alice. You made me feel alive. You deserve so much more than I could ever give you. I hope you'll find a real family. And be happy. Without me. I love you. Hands up. Next. Wait. Are you sure you should continue? Maybe... Maybe we should leave things as they are. Two. Power of the public. We, the public, are some of the most powerful forces out there in the world. The way we think and feel about something is important for the people who lead us. Right now, we live in a world where a lot of people feel their opinion doesn't matter. But a ruler who consistently goes against the will of the people he rules won't be a ruler for very long. This is why your opinion matters. And this is why rulers in a country with a free press keep a tight pulse on what's going on in the public opinion. In the game, public opinion plays a big part in the story arc of Marcus. The choices you make as Marcus change the way the public sees you and sees androids in general. If you decide for a violent android rights movement, the game will punish you for that. People will see you in a less favorable way and you will be hated for it. The free press will frame you as terrorists and you will have a violent uprising. If you choose the more pacifist way of protesting, the public will like that because the media will frame you as a pacifist, as somebody who only wants human rights and wants the same as humans have. This will lead to a more, to a different view that the public opinion holds. And also, both of these ways, they are unnecessarily wrong, but they change the way that the people leading interact with you, a new civil rights movement. And you have to ask, how do you want people to see you? Do they want to see you as equals or as conquering overlords who terrorize everybody? Three. Historical themes. In the game, deviant androids try to escape to Canada. Because in Canada, there are no android laws. Does this sound a little bit familiar to you? For certain people in 19th century America, this might sound very familiar. In the 1800s, Detroit was part of a network called the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad was a loosely organized organization of cities and peoples trying to get enslaved people from the south to the north and into Canada, where they could be free people. This is basically what the game is trying to make you relive in a more modern context and give you some idea of what might happen, have happened to the people traveling by the Underground Railroad. An overarching element in the game is the fear of losing your way of living. And that's not in a broad philosophical sense, that's in a narrow 
financial sense. The fear of losing your job. They took our job! They took our job! When people lose their jobs, they tend to get very angry. This has happened before, and this will continue to happen, and is even happening nowadays in our time. The game makes you suffer the consequences from this. The way people interact with androids is shaped around the idea that the androids took the jobs of the humans, and now the humans can support themselves. This is very comparable to the situation where we are in now, where a lot of migrants are coming towards the civilized Western world. They take positions that we, the Westerners, have for ourselves. They take them, and we lose our job. They take our job! They took 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 your job! They took your job! So, but instead of being the Westerner, you are the person taking the job. And you start to actually see and feel a little bit what they might experience. And trust me, this can get very ugly in the game, and this can get very ugly in real life. Okay, so I want to insert a little editor's note right here. Uh, because the way that I'm saying uh, they took our jobs, and the way I'm making this point, uh, it makes me sound a little bit like... I sort of agree with the kind of people that I actually want to disagree with. I personally do not believe that people, uh, that migrants coming from other countries will take all of our jobs and that they are just here to get lucky and to leech off of our riches. Uh, so just keep that in mind, please, and don't come for me in the comments. Apart from people taking your jobs, it also, takes, it also focuses on a different thing that we in the 21st century have to deal with. Automation. How is automation going to work in a capitalistic system? In a capitalistic system, somebody's worth is determined based on what they can produce or what they contribute to the society and they get rewarded for that. If you can't contribute or you can't produce, you don't get rewarded and you can make a living in this system. Of course, there are social securities in place in certain countries to help you. In my country, for example, if you lose your job, there is a social security. But that's not everywhere. That's not the case in some places. So in a system where a person's worth is completely determined based on what they can produce or contribute to society and be rewarded for that. What will happen to people whose job get replaced by a machine who doesn't need to get rewarded and can do it better, can produce better or contribute better? What will happen to those people? Will we become obsolete? How will we make rent? These are questions that the game asks us to think about. And that we actually have to think about. Because this is dangerous. There is another part in the game where all the androids who took the jobs and who were better and who only wanted to make a life for themselves were rounded up and forced to take their skin off. They were put in camps, guarded by human guards with machine guns. They lost every bit that made them uniquely them. And in the end, they were rounded up and being systematically destroyed. Does this remind you of anything that happened before in history? Because it sure as hell did for me. Forward! Scared. I I don't wanna go. There's no choice, Alice. Next! No, Cara. I I can't. You have to go through alone. If you don't do as they say, they'll hurt us. Do you understand? You first! It's alright. She'll go now. Won't you, Alice? It's your turn. Please, Cara, don't. We have to.
Strip off. Put your clothes in the dumpster. You, take this one of a dump. No, no, please, I beg you. I gave you an order. Obey. Step forward when you hear the signal, you got it? I don't want to tell you a second time. Come on, let's go, move. Because it sure as hell did for me. This is one of the parts of the game that made me really feel what it is like to be human. It made me feel more human and made me feel more of the human experience. And it's these kind of things that turn this game into an exercise in empathy, an exercise in social questioning and critiquing the society that we live in and don't just take enough with what we have right now, but always look for how can we, where are the flaws, how can we do it better? The game really does this well because it puts you literally in the shoe of somebody else and makes you feel what they feel by investing in the character. You are the character, you make the choices and what happens to them is something that happens to you. And this really makes the game an exercise in empathy and an exercise in social critique. All I got left to say is, play the game, Just a little become while more longer. human. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Fight on just a little while longer. Fight on just a little while longer pray on just a little while longer incredible Everything the, the deviants the deviants are singing See?